my uh, countrymen. As of the 21st of uh, this month, I signed Proclamation Number 1081, placing the entire Philippines under martial law. This uh, proclamation was uh, to be implemented upon my clearance. And clearance was granted at uh, 9 o'clock in the evening of the 22nd, last night. I have uh, proclaimed martial law in accordance with the powers vested in the President by the Constitution of the Philippines. The uh, proclamation of martial law is not a military takeover. I, as your duly elected President of the Republic, use this power which may be implemented by the military authorities, but still is a power embodied in the Constitution to protect the Republic of the Philippines and our democracy. A Republican, a democratic form of government is not a helpless government. When it is imperiled by the danger of a violent overthrow, an insurrection or a rebellion, it has inherent and built-in powers wisely provided for under the Constitution. Such a danger confronts the Republic of the Philippines. Article 7, Section 10, Paragraph 2 of the Constitution provides, and I quote, The President shall be Commander-in-Chief of all the armed forces of the Philippines, and whenever it becomes necessary, he may call out such armed forces to prevent or suppress. If uh, such firearms are covered by licenses, but without the permission of the armed forces of the Philippines, is punishable with death. Curfew is established from 12 o'clock midnight to 4 o'clock in the morning. The departure of Filipinos abroad is temporarily suspended. Exceptions, of course, are official missions that may be necessary. Clearances will be given by the Secretary of National Defense. In the meantime, rallies and demonstrations are prohibited. So too are strikes, especially in critical parts, of which only six were recovered from the area. This rocket can pierce steel 18 inches thick and the bridge reinforced concrete of uh, 36 inches uh, thickness, as well as four uh, sandbags put together. Also captured by our government troops in this Palanum landing were two Browning automatic rifles, which were originally looted by Defector Victor Cortes from the arsenal of the Philippine Military Academy. Five Garand, or M1 rifles, one telephone switchboard, seven uh, um, telephone sets, some uh, magazines for rifles, and many revealing subversive documents. The landing, l this landing of military armaments and equipment in uh, Palanan, uh, Isabella, indicated, one, that the claim of the new people's army that they are well funded, uh, the plenty of um, money has basis in fact. Two, that they now have sources of funds and equipment, not only from inside the Philippines, but also from outside our country. Three, that the Communist Party and the New People's Army are capable of landing armaments, military equipment, and even personnel in the uh, many points unguarded in the long sea coast of the Philippines, which sea coast is twice that of the United States. The defense establishment has admitted that there have been attempts to infiltrate the military organizations as well as the office of the Secretary of National Defense. There have been various incidents 
and attempts to sabotage not only the operations of the armed forces of the Philippines, but the operations of the national government. It has been reported that the communication system of the Philippine Constabulary is being utilized by the subversives. The subversives have organized uh, urban partisans in the greater Manila area, and they have been and still are very active. They have uh, succeeded in some of their objectives. The violent disorder in Mindanao and Sulu has uh, to date resulted in the killing of over 1,000 civilians and about 2,000 armed Muslims and Christians, not to mention the more than 500,000 of injured, displaced, and homeless persons, as well as the great number of casualties among our government troops. At the same time, the economy of Mindanao and Sulu is almost completely paralyzed. I assure you that I am utilizing this power for the proclamation of martial law vested in me by the Constitution for one purpose alone, and that is to save the Republic and reform our society. I wish to emphasize these two objectives. We will eliminate the threat of a violent overthrow of our republic. But at the same time, we must now reform the social, the economic, and political institutions in our country. The plan, the orders for reform and removal, of the iniquities of that society, the cleanup of government, of its corrupt and sterile elements, the liquidation of the criminal syndicates, the systematic development of our economy, the general program for a new and better Philippines will be explained to you. But we must start out with the elimination of anarchy and the maintenance of peace and order. I have had to use this constitutional power in order that we may not completely lose the civil rights and freedom which we cherish. I assure you that this is not a precipitate decision, that I have weighed all the factors. If there were any other solution at our disposal and uh, ability which could solve this problem, we would utilize such a solution. And I would choose it. But there is none. I've used the other two alternatives of first calling out the troops to quell the rebellion and I have suspended the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus. But the rebellion has not been stopped. I repeat, it worsened. Thus it was discovered that when the suspension of the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus was lifted in January 11, 1972, the organization of the Communist Party had expanded their area of operations as well as increased their membership. So these two remedies, calling out of the troops and the suspension of the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus are unavailing. You are all witnesses to this. You have witnessed the events of the last year. We have fallen and we are falling back on our last line of defense. We are also witnesses to the patience that we have shown in the face of provocation. In the face of abuse and license, we have used or attempted to use persuasion. Now, the limit has been reached, for we are against the wall. We must now defend the Republic of the Philippines with this stronger power granted by the Constitution. To those guilty of treason, insurrection, rebellion, it may pose a grave danger. But to the ordinary citizenry, to almost all of you, whose primary concern is merely to be left alone, to pursue your lawful activities, this is the guarantee 
of the freedom that you seek. All that I do and we in government must do is for the Republic and for you. Rest assured that we will continue to do so. And I have prayed to God for guidance. Let us all continue to pray to him. I am confident that with God's help, we will attain our dream of a reformed society, a new and brighter world. Thank you.